Hey, welcome to NX for Film Advice. I'm Deontay Jenkins and here's what's on my mind. Ernest Hemingway, here's some tips he has for writers. You heard that right today, I'm being lazy and using an actual expert's advice rather than giving my own. I'm doing that because I stumbled upon Ernest Hemingway's seven writing tips and I thought they were great. So why not share them with you guys? But before we get into all of that, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video. You can check out my short film Cassidy, link in the description below. Also by clicking the link above. Also check out some of the other videos we have on this channel if you're into film or filmmaking. All right, now that that's out of the way, here we go. Seven writing tips from Ernest Hemingway. The first tip that Ernest Hemingway gives is when you're looking for something to write and you have no idea what it's gonna be, write down one true sentence. Now, what does that mean, one true sentence? Well, when you're looking for a place to start, you typically need some sort of inspiration. And there are a million things in life to give you inspiration, but as a storyteller, you look for the truth in everything. So, sometimes you have no idea what to start with. His advice is to look at life and write down one thing that's true. Something that is just 100% undeniable, like death will come for us all. I mean, if you wanna go dark, you can go with that. The goal is to write down something so true that it gets the wheels turning and you get to exploring that subject matter. So say if you wanted to write down something like these inexpert film advice videos are great, then that would give you a perfect place to start for a new story because everyone knows that's true. Hmm. His second bit of advice is to always stop when you know what's gonna happen next. When I read this, I thought this was one of the most brilliant things to prevent writer's block. I don't personally get writer's block. I just get overwhelmed with ideas, which often causes me to stop writing, but this could help that too. You don't wanna write to where you know what's gonna happen and then stop. That way, when you come to write the next time, you automatically have something to start with. And then the momentum from that will help you to continue to move forward in your story. Take this for example. Deontay walks down the street. That's the beginning of your story. Now if you know by the middle of your story that you want him to trip on the sidewalk and fall on his face, then you need to stop a little ways before that. So you write, Deontay is walking down the street, he comes up to a sidewalk, and that's where you stop. But you have no idea where to go after that. It's much less daunting when you know what you're gonna start with than to come the next day with no ideas at all. I thought it was brilliant. I tried it, it works, you should try it too. His next piece of advice is something that's incredibly hard. He says to never think about the story when you're not working on it. How in the holy f do you not think about your story 24 seven? Before I tell you how, let me tell you why. If you're constantly thinking about your story, things become stale and new ideas don't flow as freshly. Also, you lose all of the unknown. For me, one of the best parts of writing is discovering things that I didn't know about the story. Listening to the characters, paying attention to the situations that they find themselves in, letting them tell me the story and in turn letting the story tell itself. That's what makes your writing feel exciting, not just for you, but for your audience. But again, how in the f do you do that? It's really as simple as distracting yourself. If you're a novel writer and you're writing a novel, try reading something that will distract you from what you're writing. If you're a screenwriter, try watching a movie. Go outside, hang with some friends, ride a bike, listen to some music, eat some ice cream or something. You want to come into your work with the freshest mind possible. That way your ideas will feel fresh and the story will feel fresh to you and your audience that you're writing for. Sometimes it's just not good to be constantly thinking about your story. Give it a break every now and then. So this is something that I always tell people to do. Before you start writing, read what you wrote before. Now we've talked about momentum and you wanna have some momentum when moving forward in your writing. So how do you build up momentum? Well, you just back up a little bit. It's physics, I think. Reading back what you wrote before will help give you that momentum moving forward so when you get back to the place that you stopped, you'll have some kind of flow in order to continue with your story. You'll be in that mindset, you'll be in that place, and you'll be able to just move forward in that mindset in place. Now, when you get to the point where it's too much to read back every time, just read back a few pages, or if it's a book, a few chapters, if it's a screenplay, a few scenes. The point is to be in that mindset and be able to flow where the story leads you next. You're not just picking up cold and going forward. You got some heat behind you. That's the goal. One of the hardest things about writing is getting emotion out of your audience. What Ernest Hemingway says to do is to not describe emotion, but to create it. Now, what he means by this is, as a writer, you need to be paying attention to a lot of things in life. That's where your inspiration comes from. But one of the most important things you need to pay attention to is the emotional moments in life. Normal people feel emotions and just let them happen. Don't put too much thought into them. So when you're feeling an emotion inside of you or when you're remembering an emotion that you had, try to trace back to that emotion and see exactly what caused it. And then you want to describe what caused that emotion in one sentence. If you have accurately described what caused that emotion in a sentence, your audience should feel the exact same emotion. We're only humans, we have emotional responses to things. What he's saying is make the emotion by giving the audience exactly what it is that caused the emotion. Why did I cry? Why did I feel sad? Why did I feel happy? Why did I feel angry? What things caused these emotions? It's kind of the difference between show don't tell. Don't 
Tell me the emotion, show me what happened to cause it. It definitely sounds easier than it actually is, but once you figure it out, your audience will be able to feel the emotion on a palpable level. You as a writer might too. If you're really making that emotional state, you might bring yourself back to where you got it from. And if it can move you, it can move your audience. This one is the interesting one, something that I don't actually do, but it makes sense. Ernest Hemingway says to use a pencil. His theory is that when you're writing, you're gonna go through a rewrite and then you're gonna go through a proofread before it's done at least one. So what he's saying is if you write first with a pencil, then type, then rewrite, then proofread, that gives you an extra step to check and make sure that your story is good. It kind of makes sense. Not to mention when you're writing with your hand, it feels a little bit different than when you're typing. We can type mindlessly. I can have a conversation while I type. I can type without looking. So a lot of times when we're doing things that mindless, it leads to mindless storytelling, which no one ever wants. So giving your writing that extra step and giving it that extra bit of rereading and rewriting should make it better because it's going through your filter again. Of course, the way you write comes down to personal preferences, but what I would recommend if you don't wanna write the entire thing out by hand, write down just the story points by hand, a detailed description of what you know is gonna happen, and then use it as a guideline when typing up your stories. That way the story is still going through your filter again, but you don't have to write out the entire thing. Sometimes people don't like handwriting. Sometimes people don't have time for that. I definitely type way faster than I write. But if handwriting gives me a little bit of an edge and makes my story that much better, why not try it? The final thing is keep it brief. And that's what I'm going to do for this last thing. Ernest Hemingway is known for his short but efficient sentence structure. Sometimes keeping it simple is the best thing that you can possibly do. So try writing things out and then stripping them back to the bare essential information that you need. That's how you know when a writer is good. Something that would take somebody normal a paragraph to say could be said in two sentences from a good writer and a sentence from a great writer. Identify what needs to be said and say it. Eliminate everything else. If these seven tips don't help improve your writing, then I don't know what will. Apply these things to your writings and watch yourself grow as a writer. There's a reason why Ernest Hemingway is considered one of the greatest authors of all time. He knows what he's talking about. And once you sit down and implement some of these ideas, you'll watch your writing grow in no time at all. But then again, what do I know? I'm no expert. Thank you for watching another episode of An Expert Film Advice. If you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up and tell me what you thought by leaving a comment down below. Also drop a comment if you have anything that you want my An Expert Advice on at all. Don't forget to check out my short film Cassidy, link in the description below. You can follow me here on social media. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.